Hey, I'm gonna cook for my family for an entire week using only this magazine. Stick around to see what we think of it. Oh, I thought it was yummy. How's the flavor? Bad. This is gonna become a regular this summer for sure. Tastes like a black forest cake. This is my new favorite thing ever. Hey everyone, welcome to PB with Jay. I'm Jeremy. Uh, for those of you who have not been to the channel before, this is what I do. I do a lot of plant-based, vegan-esque things, but I also do reviews of cookbooks lately. It's been a very popular thing on the channel. A lot of people love it. So thank you so much for tuning into these. My family has a lot of fun doing it, and we get to try out a lot of cool things as we go along. On that note, if you have any cookbooks that are plant-based, vegan, or otherwise that you want to see me do and review, let me know in the comments below. If you want to pick up a cookbook that is not vegan, I'm happy to try to tell you how you can make the recipes more vegan, or not more vegan, you can make them actually vegan, uh, and do swaps and whatnot. That's a fun experiment too, so don't be shy about recommending any of your favorite cookbooks down below in the comments. Otherwise, let me know where you're watching this from. I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So in this video, we're gonna dive into the summer edition of Forks Over Knives. I always get so many great ideas from these magazines. They're gorgeous. They're like cookbooks unto themselves, but they're, you know, a bit more affordable. And just the photos are great. There's great articles in here. These are great for if you're just starting out to eat plant-based because a lot of the recipes are very, very simple, but they also just give you great ideas. And I'm excited for the summer one because they've got ways to use barbecues in different ways that I haven't done before. And then just some other ideas in general. So I'm pumped to dive into this one. Another thing I've been doing on the channel later is interviewing people that have been in the success stories section of Forks Over Knives. I was also in the winter of 2023 edition myself. So you can check those videos out on the channel as well. And if you like this sort of thing, hit that thumbs up, the old like button, and subscribe for more things like this. If you wanna get a little preview of what I'm gonna make in this video, the description down below has chapters that will take you to each one individually. Otherwise, just watch the video straight through. On to the food. So for breakfast, my wife and I are gonna try these chocolate and PB, or sorry, I should say PB and chocolate smoothie bowls. I thought I had flax seeds. I have grounded flax seeds, but I don't have the regular ones. So I can't do that fun thing where they say you should toast them and let them pop in the pan. So if you can do that, let me know in the comments below how they turn out, because that just sounds like a whole lot of fun. Nutritionally, I know that you need to like grind the seed up and get what's inside to get the, the benefits of it. So I'm not sad we're not gonna have that. I'll probably add a little muesli or granola to the top of the bowl to make up for that. But uh, I'm looking forward to this one. It's simple. I make smoothie bowls all the time, so this isn't anything new. But there's a there's a lack of breakfast options in this issue, so uh, that's what we're going with. Here you go, William, eat your breakfast. It's green. Yeah, it doesn't look like the picture. Nope. Wanna try it though? It looks green. You can add other things to it, but that's the starting point. Very tasty. It does not taste green at all. It tastes chocolatey mm. and peanut buttery. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. What do you think of the consistency? Beautiful. Yeah? Mm. I like my smoothie bowls to be a little thicker. I like them almost to be like ice cream bowls. So this is a good one. I, I like smoothie bowls in general, but mine, I would want a little bit thicker. And yeah, they totally Photoshopped the color here to make it not green because, or maybe we just use too much kale. I don't know. Either way, it's, it's very green, but it's delicious. So for dinner tonight, we're going to make a creamy basil pesto. Are you excited, Willie? Yeah. Want to help? Is that a request or a question? 
I guess I'm making this by myself. <laughs> All the recipe I'm doing here is just the sauce. So I gotta make the rest of the meal on its own. Now the good news is, cause I know you hate it's at- pasta. No, but it's just I the pesto. I the rest of the meal. You put the water on in the pot, you turn it on high, you boil it, you put the pasta in, you cook it, you drain it, put the sauce on. That's it. Why is this so hard? Okay. My, can I go now? What is the rest of the meal? If we want to add any vegetables to it. Okay. Like what, what you want to put in there. Like we have zucchini, we have uh, peppers. Well, we should just do that like a little stir fry on the side. And people can add their own? Yeah. Because some people, I'm not mentioning any names. Annie. You can eat it on the side. She can she add it on the side. Same as mushrooms. Okay, that's what we'll do. We'll do a little stir fry on the side. So just to bring you up to speed, uh, our basil's disgusting. To be fair, it's a week old, um, but it's it's really, it's not well, pretty. It's probably way longer than a week old. It's just been in our house for a week. Yeah, I thought it would be fine until today. It's not. I'm still gonna use the base of this recipe because the base, here's what this recipe calls for. It calls for pine nuts, which I couldn't find. Uh, so I'm gonna use cashews. That'll be fine. Uh, what's this fresh basil or arugula? I'm gonna use kale. I found some spinach that I haven't used. I'm gonna use spinach instead of kale. This one puts in um, silken tofu to make it creamy and add protein so you don't have to add beans or anything. And then nooch. So we're gonna call a little audible. I'm sorry. Uh, I know for a fact it would taste good with basil, but we don't have any. Okay, but you're not using basil and you're not using pine nuts. Couldn't find these it's things. You know really what? Some recipe. of these people watching might not have those things either, so they're gonna wanna know how you can take a recipe like this and modify it. And that's who I'm here for. I'm here for you poor buggers who look at a recipe and go, I don't have those things. I couldn't possibly make it. I do that all the time. You wing on the fly. Um, I mean, she's not wrong either. I could just wait, but I don't want to. I want you people to see this video while the magazine's fresh in the stands. But I appreciate your input. Thanks. So I'm gonna start off by roasting the cashews. And then really, it just goes into a food processor with everything else. This is how you thaw peas really fast. You put boiling water over them. And then you let them sit for a minute or two. And then you add to the pasta. This is one of those meals that's so fast, you can make it pretty much in the time it takes to get your water boiling and cook the pasta. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm, try it, try it, try it, try it. I like the cashews more than probably the pine nuts would have been. All right, now we just mix it all together. And you try the pesto. Like my hat. Love your hat. Do you like pesto? Do you like it? Yeah. See, she says it tastes like pesto, which means she can't tell that there's stuff like tofu in there and all those other healthy things. I want to tell her that now. She's not going to like it anymore. Yeah, that looks gross. It's good, we all liked it. Moving on. Mom. Yeah, he'll have second dinner. He's 14. <laughs> so for dessert, I'm gonna make these mini cherry panna cotta trifles. I'm starting them in the morning because they need time to sit in the fridge. So if you're gonna make this dessert, you need to make a little bit of extra time in your schedule to do so. The dessert itself, I don't think is that time consuming. It just needs time to set and sit. So this is fairly simple. It's kind of like making three layers. It's basically making some kind of like a granola crust base. I ended up adding more dates to the food processor for this oat base. It just didn't feel like they were sticking together that well. And they still aren't, but I'm gonna leave it because it's all gonna come together. It's fine. It doesn't need to have structure to it. It's fine. And then what would be like an imitation Cheesy vanilla filling.
The only thing I don't have is I don't have cherry preserves. What I do have is this homemade strawberry chia jam. I'm just gonna use that. But if you have a sugar-free cherry preserve, go for it. Otherwise, a homemade jam or whatever you got would be fine. Ideally, it would be cherry as well to keep the flavor profile, but fuck it. What you got, right? Gotta use what you got. It's cherry season. Mm. It's not cherry season, <laughs> but they have it in the stores. It's okay. so really not cherry It's cherry season somewhere. 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 This is the problem. I'm, I'm trying to do a review for a summer book where we don't necessarily have all the summer vegetables available just yet. So some of our stuff's still being shipped in. It's not quite fresh, but I wanted to get this out for all of you so you can get a preview of this book that's now on newsstands. And I don't have super fancy uniform jars like they have in this picture. I got mismatched little things like that, so we're gonna make it work. Cause you know, we're just not fancy people. You probably aren't either. We're gonna make it pretty, gosh darn it. It looks like jello. Can Just, I take a bite? Yeah, give for it. You gotta get that stuff in the bottom, bub. Yeah, you gotta go all the way down. All the way down. How is it? Mm. It's good. Yeah, good flavor. Yeah. Oh, mine popped too. Mine didn't pop. Mmm. It's very good. It's a nice balance, but if you just have the pudding part in the middle. Yeah, what would you add to that? Nothing. And he loves it. He thinks it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Wow. I would add maybe to the flavor. Maybe just a little more extract. Yeah, more vanilla. More vanilla? Almond. We'll show you Ephraim's when he gets home. So what do I eat? You, well, you should dig, dig down to the bottom. Just try to get like a bite with everything. Pretty good. Yeah? I like the pudding. You could probably make that on your own with the cherries and then without the weird stuff at the bottom. I think I can make the bottom more of like a crust. I think it's it's not, there's not enough to it. I, I'm, I'm I like it. it, I don't like crust. Mixed reviews on what we would do to magnify it or change it, but everyone loved it. I'm gonna make this broccoli crunch salad for dinner. So the only difference I'm gonna do is because we're gonna eat it like a dinner salad. So I wanna add a little more oomph to it. So to do that, all I'm really gonna do is maybe put a few more edamame in there and add quinoa as well. And because I'm feeling a little bit lazy, what I'm thinking of doing is running all the vegetables is through my food processor, since they're all gonna be turned into the same thing anyway. And then they're really, really nice and bite-sized. Yeah, this is really about as simple as you can get, but I think it'll be good. Ah, this is gonna come together quick. Let's start with Annie. <laughs> this is the amount she took. Mm -hmm. This is the amount I took. You don't like it, do you? Uh-uh. How's the flavors besides the edamame, which you don't like? Bad. I mean, that's that's what you get with Annie. It's pure honesty. You, there's no questioning whether or not she likes the meal. Coolie? It's good. It's crunchy. It's, uh, it's good. Lots of different textures. It's a little bitter. It's like a bitter, but it's good. It's okay. I like it. I mean, honestly, for a meal unto itself, this is this would be more like as a side salad with a bunch yeah, of other salads. I like it coleslaw. You know what would be good in it? Apple. Ooh, no. Ephraim says no. Mm. I agree. This, if I was to make this again, it would be with other salads and other things as like a side, but there is enough stuff in here because I added the quinoa. 
and the edamame, it definitely has enough to make it like a proteiny. It gives you all the stuff you need for your body, but uh, but it's good. It's good. Probably just I wouldn't serve it for dinner like I did. For dinner, we're gonna make grilled greens with ponzu sauce. This sounds delightful. It's kind of a version on a barbecue bowl. And my barbecue, I think, is on its last legs in terms of propane. I think I got enough to get one more grill out of it, which I'll need to get more for another meal I'm making this week. Here's a hot tip. Here's how to tell if your barbecue has enough propane in it without one of those little propane meters. Boil some water and just pour it over top of the cylinder and then feel from the bottom up. And if you feel cold, that's where the propane is. So if it's hot all the way through, you're fucked, you're out of propane. But if it's cold anywhere along there, you got a little bit in there. So if you got a, a little bit on the bottom, that's probably enough for one barbecue, as long as you're not leaving something on for hours and hours and hours. Luckily with vegan barbecuing, you're really just heating stuff up and getting those char marks. So I don't need more than 10 minutes or so. The big difference for me here is I don't think I've ever made or had a ponzu sauce. So that'd be fun. So for this ponzu sauce, I do not have date molasses. So I'm gonna use maple syrup. Go Canada. Ponzu! I spilled some ponzu sauce, which is okay, because the tofu has to be in it. So we'll do that. It's gonna work out just fine. You know, it's pretty simple. You barbecue some of the vegetables. You don't barbecue other ones. You make sauce. You put the sauce on the vegetables while they're barbecuing, and you uh, you serve it on rice. Fuck, I'm missing my basil again, the basil that screwed me. You're supposed to put a little bit of basil on top of this, but I, I don't have it. I don't have it. So it's gonna be missing a little bit of a flavor element to it. Maybe I'll mix some basil into the rice. How's dinner? Ah. Any? With a mummy? It's good. Tasty Asian style bowl. Any? Over here. How is it? She wants that beating, that's a good sign. How's the bok choy? Mm. Yeah. Good talk, Annie. Annie just asked if she could have this in her lunch tomorrow, which is, you know, about as good as it gets for a review from Annie. Yeah, she doesn't take any leftovers in her lunch usually. Ever. Even like mac and cheese, she won't take. So that's kind of an awesome review, actually. Yeah, that's about as good as it gets. I really like this. It's nice and simple. I don't think I've ever made a ponzu sauce before. Oh, and, because we don't even know what that means. And I like the little radish. There's a little kick on top. And the sauce is like nice and light. But still has a good flavor to it. I'm gonna Does try it... a bit of everything, ready? Oh my god, all in one bite? It's a big piece of tofu. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Makes it. Mm. Not with you. So that's a winner all around. We like it. It's pouring down rain, so excuse the noise in the background. For dinner tonight, I'm gonna make this balsamic mushroom zoodle noodle bowl. Or noodle zoodle? Noodle zoodle. This could go over well, but it's a cold, crappy, rainy day. I should have made soup. This one fucking happens all the time. Last week was hot as shit. I made soup two days a week. My family was pissed about it. I can't win. So this is a cold noodle salad, except for the pasta I'll make right before we eat it. The trick to this is you need a little bit of time in advance because it's gotta sit and chill in the fridge. The smell is amazing. Oh, it smells so good. So it goes in two steps. The first is cooking up your vegetables and your beans and your tomatoes and the garlic.
and then letting them rest in the fridge. And then you make your dressing in the same pot so you can get those extra flavors coming out of it. Let that chill as well. That did not make very much. And then at least an hour or so later, you do the rest of it, which is like noodles and zucchini. What's the word? Spiralized. I'm gonna assume my daughter won't want the mushroom part, although she can just pull them out and it kind of big. Oh, I thought it was yummy. What about me? What do you think? Okay. Meh. You liked it? Meh? Meh. Meh is not bad for me. Meh. It's meh. That's, that's the I French. like the pasta. I like the pasta and the tomatoes. The tomatoes. You like the raw pasta and the plain tomatoes that you, I didn't and, cook? And the curly stuff. What's this stuff called? Zucchini. Zucchini. So all the elements I didn't cook. Right? Yeah, because uh, other stuff doesn't, isn't my problem. Hey, from? What do you think? Bro. <laughs> hmm? I'm listening. What did you think? It was meh. Yeah? It was okay. Too garlicky. I thought it was good. You're, you're being nice. Did you actually? Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I think sure. they're lying. Sure. I liked it more than I thought I would, but I don't know if I'd make it again. So for tonight, for dessert, I'm gonna make these chocolate, they're called raspberry brownie bites, but I'm gonna use cherries because I have fresh cherries and I like cherries. These, they cook individually, so they're kind of like a really dense muffin. Seems simple enough. Let's give it a go. The only difference I did was instead of making 18, I just made a dozen and I baked them for 18 minutes between 15 and 18 so if you want to do a little modification you can do that Chips? You're awesome, right. Well, you guys are jerks. This is this is your whole joke now. You just right? list ingredients and say those parts were good. No, it's good. Okay. It's good. me. <laughs> it tastes like a granola bar, but with a lot of chocolate and a lot of cherries. It's really good. That didn't sound like a compliment at first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like granola bars, but I'm not a kid, so. Is there almond extract in here? Huh? Is there almond extract in here? There is. Good palate. Mmm, I like, it tastes like a black forest cake. Yeah? Yeah. Ooh, that is high praise. Mmm, -hmm. yummy, yummy, yummy. It's really good, actually, thank you. Yeah? Especially yeah. a muffin. Especially a muffin. It's in, I made a muffin cup, but it's a brownie. It's really dense. I'm gonna try. You gonna take me? No. No. I found you stuff. He's got stuff to do. He's a busy guy. He graduates. He graduates grade eight tomorrow. He all grows up. My place to go. People will see. Oh my goodness, that is like a black forest cake. And you know what? I think that's because I swapped out the cherries for raspberries, or vice versa. How does that work? I put cherries in it, so I swapped out the raspberries for cherries. There we go. Oh wow, this is this is my new favorite thing ever. I want 30 more of these. It's so good. So for the final dish in our Forks Over Knives Summer 23 edition, we're gonna have this grilled fajita platter. Now, it's the end of the week and I think we misproportioned some of our vegetables. So uh, somehow that red onion I bought got eaten up. I don't know where. Um, Woody's home. We ate all the zucchinis, even though I bought extra zucchinis. We do have peppers. Uh, and I never bought a jalapeno because my kids don't love the spicy, spicy, spicy. So, but what I am excited about this is making a salsa that I can mostly make on the barbecue. So we all had a late lunch today and my son's 
has a graduation party tonight, so we might have a, might not eat a lot of this, but anyway, I like the idea of making a fajita platter on the barbecue. So the essence of that will still be alive, even though I'm missing a few things. See how that salsa tastes. That's really good. Yeah, if I had added a little bit of jalapeno to that, it'd be nice. I might throw in a little bit of hot sauce, but oh, that's such a beautiful idea for a really quick salsa. Wanna try this salsa? Mmm. I don't like tomatoes, but I like that. How weird is that? It doesn't taste like salsa, but it's made of tomatoes and all the things that are in salsa, but it doesn't taste like salsa. But she likes it, so that doesn't really matter. It's all a moot point. It's gonna shut up and take that as a win. Now we're gonna spread some of this onto the vegetables as we cook them. And we're also going to use some of this for the beans, mash them together. Gross. Mm. I'm just joking, I didn't try it. It's not gross, it's really good. Let me get a bite of this. Good. <laughs> That's gonna spill all over you, over the plate. Oh, oh. Mm. Yummy. Oh man. That's so good. This is great. Like, so the idea, I've never done that, growing the vegetables and using it for a taco or a fajita. This is a banger. This is gonna become a regular this summer for sure. No! Love it. No. Love it. And he loves it too. No. I'm gonna get some. No. Oh, with some portobello mushrooms? Mmm. Mm. Oh, the avocado! I'm supposed to, I, I have avocado to put on top. I forgot to cut up the avocado. I'm gonna go get it right now. So you're not gonna see it in here. But. It's. Damn it! Anyway, put avocado on top. Thanks for joining my family and I for the summer edition of Forks Over Knives magazine. If you have a cookbook that you'd like to see me do a review of, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button because I do a lot of these on the channel. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Speaking of liking it, Facebook thinks you'll like this video right here. So give it a shot, check it out, and let me know what you think in the comments below as well. Thanks.